He was just a determined child. Like when he put his mind to something, he did it. And I saw him do it year after year after year after year. When he said he was going to lose weight because he didn't want to stop playing football in Pop Warner. He did that. And after that, everything Ray literally put his mind to, he did it. He said, Mom, one day I'm going to go play D1 ball. He did. And then again, Mom, one day I'm going to be playing football on Sundays. It was caught on a deflection by Ray Ray Armstrong. The desperation throw off Rashard Robinson's hands into Ray Ray Armstrong's hands. Nice tackle. They put your dreams in my Ray Ray Armstrong. Until somebody opened the door and noticed you now you're 70. They needed who they would have to run. I was raised by Ray Killers and John Lewis. Now big thoughts. I ain't really the good one, my man. We could be shoulder to shoulder, but I ain't feeling you. We could be face to face, but I ain't feeling you. I'm hitting point on the I'm from the city, ain't no Armstrong. bitch, and I ain't scary. It's kind of odd when you ain't got Miami your parents. Ain't no fairies. Ready for war, get down, down the door, the shoot. Put your mask Whoa. on. Whoa, flush these crews. What a play by Ray Ray Armstrong. And bitch, we he run timed it city. perfectly. We proof. And we done lost some brothers on this road. That's why my brother walk around with a dirty pole. Whoa, and I can't tell him shit. I had a, I mean, I had an older brother. My older brother was three years older than me, so. He, he was playing before me. So, I mean, I had to watch from the, from the uh, backgrounds as a little kid growing up, watching my older brother play. And, and I just wanted to be like him, little key. So when I turned five, my mom threw us right out there. I always seen toughness in us. Uh, we loved the game just like we, me, myself. Uh, we just loved the game, man. It was just always in us to like play football. And we said, you know what I'm saying, growing up, Bro, I'm playing in the NFL. I'm playing in the NFL. And uh, God, 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 God was good, man. He made it. Woo. That's where everybody really Sanford, from Sanford. That's where it all start. Any dreams, aberrations, whatever. One field right One here. One field. Gonna make you, <laughs> you gonna find out if you're a quitter, champion, winner, whatever. Cause boy, and everybody, all five teams on one field. Yes, sir. Everybody can see everything. Midget, Junior Pee Wee, Pee Wee, Junior Midget, Mighty Mike. <laughs> Man, listen. Mm -hmm. I had to play, I was in the fifth grade. I was like 155. Bro. I was playing with eighth graders. Trash bag, eat nothing but salad. Trash and run around the pot one or Mm -hmm. He couldn't eat uh, his the whole crack meal, dairy pies. None yeah. of that. And my mom used to buy a uh, Star Crunch oatmeal, zebra cakes. Mm -hmm. They ate, Ray Ray and AJ ate that. Zebra cake was AJ's, Ray Ray's was Star Crunch, and oatmeal's was Ray Ray's and AJ's. I ain't in the little Star, the little Star Crunch little bars. I don't know what they was called. I didn't eat it. But he had to put on the trash bag. Henry Bull, Coach Henry Bull took him to the sauna. That's right. After every practice or before every practice, he would be in the sauna with trash bags on until he dropped weight to make weight. Knowing that he was playing with older kids and he was playing fullback, those of you don't know, that's a real tough position. I remember being like, man, he my age, but he out there with the big boys, you know what I'm saying, and, and doing it. And that, that's when I, that's my earliest memory is just thinking like, wow, he's younger than me but playing older. Back then, everything was going by weight. So I was, I had to play up. I had to play with older kids. I, I knew him and watched him and watched his older brother, AJ, who got a part one, uh, coming through the ranks and uh, a very talented young man. Yeah, my father myself playing with my older brother. He three years older than me. I got cousins on the team. They older than me too. So it's like, man, I ain't got no time to be scared. Like, 
this is what I got to deal with. This is what I got to deal with. I got to go home after this. I ain't trying to go back home and my brothers and cousins talking mess to me like, man, you soft, da da da. Nah. So. I'll tell you how I really used to be, how competitive we was. Well, I was playing with my older brother, right? I had a cousin on the team at the time, too. So we were, we were scrimmaging on where I think I was on offense at the time, got the ball. My cousin, he hit me late. <laughs> he hit me late. So I got up mad, threw the ball at him, boom. So we started fighting. So he come from behind, like, he, he, he come behind and hit me. My brother, so my brother, like, my brother come, that's my cousin. Now we out here brawling, we out here fighting in practice. I'm fighting with my cousin. When my brother come clean him up. <laughs> so we the hey, so we end up jumping my own cousin out there. We like blood out here. We jumping that boy out here on the field. Man, my uncle my Solomon man, he got mad. That boy snapped on him. Man, y'all tripping, man. Y'all supposed to be out here fighting, man. Y'all cousin. <laughs> so I was like in the fifth grade playing with eighth graders already. So, I mean, they all had to play that for like three years until I got to high school. I was trying to make sure that I could get him along with some of his other buddies uh, to come to Seminole High School and not go to the high school. His mother, uh, Reba, talks trash to this day about how much I talk. But uh, I would see her at football, part one of football games on Saturdays. And it got to the point that I was aggravating her. So uh, she would tell my wife, if she saw my wife before me, that, uh, you know, don't tell Kerry I'm hiding up under this tent. I do not want to hear nothing about Seminole today. I done told him I'm letting Ray Ray make the decision. You know, because initially Ray was talking about going to Lake Mary as a freshman. But uh, me being who I am and persistent and uh, aggravated, if they want to say, I'm glad that she and he made that decision uh, to come on to Seminole High School. Didn't they always talk shit? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Come on, stretch. Did you play? Damn, please. So do the fuck up. Look at third step. Watch out, man. He's giving him something to catch. Like a run up on the wall. Ah! Ah! I knew he was good, but he, he had gotten a growth spur from that eighth grade year going into ninth grade, and I didn't realize how skilled he was. If you've seen him play high school ball, you've seen him at linebacker, safety. Sometimes he dropped down and played cornerback. You've seen him at the quarterback position. I don't, I can't name too many positions I didn't see him actually go on the field and play. When I saw Big Boy feet work and how he was able to switch the ball I'm like, this guy, he's pretty good. You know, you can have folks that can dominate part one, two, the fastest, they can run outside and all this type stuff, but don't mean they have no skill. Big Boy had some skill to be his size. Because he was so talented as a freshman and so darn big, now that's about the 14 year old. Coach Harris tells me, hey man, no hard feelings, but we got to take Ray. Ray, one of the top four or five best players we have. As a 14-year-old kid, we got to play him on varsity. And Coach Williams came and said, hey, they want Ray on varsity. I said, what do you mean? He just got there as a ninth grade. No, nah, they want him on varsity. He's going to start on varsity. I said, okay, he can do it. Let's go. Not only did he get a visual of the older guy that was uh, on varsity, but he already had his mindset. Like, he wanted to be a football player. That's who he is. So his mindset was outwork everybody. Ray was on varsity, and, and we were going one and nine. We were getting whooped. I think my poor baby and him won about one or two games. All kind of things were going at him, and I knew it was rough for him. We were getting our butt beat my freshman, sophomore year, and I wanted to transfer. Like, I wanted to leave the whole school. Throughout that process, people around the county was recruiting me. You would even hear practice time. Uh, Ray Ray leaving, you know, Ray Ray going to another school. My dad was a major role in keeping me in Seminole. His father, again, was, was, was steadfast on, you know, he ain't going no way. He's going to be one of the ones, which he was, that's going to help lead us to a championship. One thing that was memorable to me, when we, he lost a game, he threw an interception late in the game or something like that, and it beat him up so bad. And, um, and he, you know, he, he was crying on my shoulder after the game, man. And I told him, okay, okay, we can get it all out today because it's the last time you cry about this. Um, 
the next time somebody else will be crying. So you go ahead and, and let it go and let it let let all of it out. And then after this, we get back to work. But I used to make them say, "Hey, if I finish, got dog, or you can finish. I get started, you get started. Take it all the way to the end." <laughs> hey, that little bad. So, what I thought, I thought it was good to get uh, the endurance built up. You know what I mean? Like just to make sure that you got the heart pumping at the right time, keep him built, trim down, keep his waist thin. Look like a football player. You dig? Boy, it's impressive to watch him, you know, still be, you know, fighting for a job every year and still perform well when he get the job, when he in position to make the play or, or do something that he needs to do, be in, you know, make somebody like it. I always say, make them know your name, you know, make them know your name. If it ain't, it ain't something, it ain't number 33, it ain't 12, it ain't 715 out there, nah. Jimmy Armstrong, got perfect first and middle name. Means great leader, Arabia's Tyree. So I always told him, hey, you're a leader. You got to be a leader. You know, you might as well be first instead of last. Now, mind you, we ain't jogging. We're not jogging, we running this trail. So when we run it and get to the end, we got to sprint to the end, now on the way back, that's when we do sit-ups and push-ups, stuff like that. Now, the junior year came around, you got the chance to see a whole different type of ball. Uh, the game was slowing down for him, the quarterback. So I said, you can hold the ball longer because they can't tackle you. You know what I'm saying? Just stuff on them off you and hold the ball until you can get your man and go get him. And then, but once the body right, once the body got right, that's when he started to perform in a better, in a better uh, fashion. More tackles, you know what I mean? We were able to play longer. And and if he made a mistake, it seemed like it brought the better out of him. You know what I mean? Like if he threw an interception, when he threw an interception or something like that, something like that, it changed the whole mentality of what he was about what he had to do on the field the next play. He was just hungry. He loved to hit. He loved to make plays, whether it's on offense or defense. Well, it was a big dog. You know what I mean? I ain't no other way to put it like that. Where Ray led. And we follow. Sanford, Florida, man. Seminole High School, man. We back at these grounds. You know, putting a lot of work out here, man. You feel me? A lot of touchdowns and got scored out here. A lot of people got scored on. Ran over. First Seminole, Ray Ray Armstrong running that Seminole spread offense. All right, let's get it. If I want me to mind that I'm a young soldier. If you don't feel it in the air, you need. I got dreams of being better than a young hover. But where I'm from, even your family keep you cold. Shoes in the back seat until somebody open the door and notice you now. Y'all feel cool with that fake love. I was raised by real killers and drug dealers, not fake thoughts. I ain't political, but my man can live real. Shoulder to shoulder, but I ain't feeling you. We could ain't hearing you. I'm hitting point blank brain, so I ain't missing you. And I done seen a lot of like two niggas getting killed over the same bitch. Yeah, and everybody scream the same thing from my hood. Yo, we scream like everybody in my past you ain't the same homie Niggas started acting different when I put them chains on me yeah, Got a little money running. in them bitches in that He doesn't come off the field, does he? He does a nice spin move And out of bounds At midfield, Ray Armstrong Picks up about 12 yards Bro, we really was walking up Like, we was going to throw games You know, that's it We was never nervous going to the game Bro, like, that shit was all the way like
day before the state championship. And I tell to so many people, they used to darn near bring me to tears because of who Ray, Ray Armstrong was, and he was nowhere near South Lee. Big boy is vocal. And I never forget, we're playing Boone on the game field. And we down 10-0, getting ready to go into halftime. So I'm taking the headset off, Ray's on the other end of the field, and I'm taking the headset off, and I'm going to put it back on the bench. And I hear him yelling. And I hear him yelling, and he's beating his chest. And he did this right here. I'm saying to myself, we lose at 10 0. This joker done had a horrible first half. Horrible. Not bad, horrible. So I'm saying to myself, man, I hope this joker is not going off on the boys about how they're playing as bad as he didn't play. I'm going to go down here straight him. When I come up and I hear it, this joker telling the boys, Put y'all on my show. That was my bad this had. I'm going to put y'all on my show. Here's Armstrong. Third down run. And it's going to be a touchdown. A touchdown. It's the quarterback, Ray Ray Armstrong. They hand it off. It is Ray Ray Armstrong. And he's in for the touchdown. His second touchdown of the game. And the Seminoles have taken the lead. One Seminole with the ball trailing by three in the 6A semifinals. Here's the quarterback with the first down. It's Armstrong. He's in open field down the sideline. Ray Ray Armstrong. Here's Looking Armstrong bouncing out, turning it up across the 20 to the 16 yard line. Armstrong carries it himself. Touchdown, Seminole. Ray Ray Armstrong with his third touchdown of the game. And look at him celebrate on the sideline. The Seminoles, for the first time in school history, have made it to the 6A state championship game as they have beaten the Boone Braves tonight, 21-17. to 17. You know, they talk about I like the crowd all the time. So I had to walk off. I'm tearing up now because he wasn't doing it for sure. And if anybody on that team, people were going to follow as a player, it was going to be a rabies Armstrong. Seeing someone that's younger than you and, 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 and physically, you know, able to do more than you, it, 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 it has to drive you naturally and let you know that you need to do some work. All heart. So you know I'm saying? That's the type of personality he had, man. All heart, man. All heart. Well, there's a lot of excitement going down here on the field. First of all, just explain to me how you're feeling right now. I feel, I feel great right now. Words can't describe how I feel. We just came out. We wanted to prove to all the people in the stand, everybody in the world, they, man, down us the whole season saying that we couldn't come out and do this. We've been preaching this since spring league and said we're going to come out and win states. And we just came out that second half and played it with heart. Heart, that's what, that's what led us to victory. And you carried the team on your shoulders. Uh, you and Andre did a great job, but you brought in all the touchdowns, three touchdowns tonight. I, I, I first half, I, have, I played a horrible first half. And second half, I went into the locker room and said, if we're going to win this game, I told myself, I, it got to be with me. I, got, I had to put the ball in my hands, and I had to take my team to state. Did you feel any pressure tonight with all the college coaches? Everyone was just around watching you. No, nah, there's no pressure. I, I don't even pay attention to that. When I'm in the game, I'm focused on the game. I don't pay attention to the sideline. I'm just, I'm so happy right now. I don't even know how to go to see. You all will be facing Miami Northwestern next week. They're, they're going to be a lot, they're going to have a lot of speed. I know you guys have some speed. Tell me about being able to get out early. You guys like to come from behind and, and play. How can you uh, change that such that, you know, you guys can stick with them and uh, maybe have the lead before instead of uh, trying to play from behind? We ain't worried about that. We just going to go out and play hard. We, we got it in our heart that we're going to win this state. And we ain't worrying about none of the hype that they bringing. We just, we, we going to come out and play hard every down, every snap. And we're going we, we to win. We're going to win next week. We went from winning six games to now we talking about winning state championships. Like, what? Like, y'all just only won a few games the previous year before this, bro. But everybody, I promise you, everybody on the team was, that was that's what everybody was saying before we like leading up into that season. Most memorable game.
State championship, man. I'm sitting in the bleacher with a whole lot of people from Sanford and everywhere else, and we're playing Miami Northwestern. And we go down 21 points, and everybody around me, they steady saying, it's over. It's done. And I'm telling them, man, shut up, man. Y'all don't watch football. It ain't over till it's over, man. There's plenty of game left. Then Ray Ray went up that middle. All I know, I got the ball, and I just see a bunch of white jerseys around me. When he hit that hole, and he came out the right, and he came up that bit, coming like that right here. Oh, bitch, it's on. Bitch, we coming back. It's time to come back now. It's after he scored that first one, bro. After he after he got through that little, that little crack, bro. And when he rolls up, I just, that was our ride, bro. When he rolls up right there in the bitch, he was on the pop. A touchdown. So now it's 21-7 going into halftime. I told the boy, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. We went at halftime, right? We was down 21-7. Like, mind you, I'm, I'm I'm outside. Everybody already in the locker room, but I'm I'm outside talking to Coach Ron, R.I.P. Um, talking to him about, man, like, what's going on? Like, man, Coach, Fig Coach Wiggins, he keep trying to force feed such and such players. Like, man, what's going on? Like, bro, like, I need to, like, let me get the ball. Let me run the ball. Like, you see, right before halftime, I'll score, bro. I'll break. You feel me, buddy? Like, I had to take matters into my own hands. Like, I'm mad, frustrated. Coach Wiggins was calling some shit. He was calling plays. And Ray Ray wasn't agreeing with the plays that he was running. And then all I remember was, I'm on the sideline. All I heard was, man, man, coach, the shit ain't working. <laughs> so Ray had that guy with authority over the offense. Like I say, bro, he was an alpha, bro. You know what I mean? He was an alpha, man. In the locker room at the time, the old linemen and everybody in there, they laughing, joking around like, Having a good time, like we winning. Literally, we were laughing in the locker room. I remember us laughing down being 721. We were laughing. I was laughing with the, the Windsor twins and you know, we, you know, just going back and forth. I'm like, man, they laughing, man, we laughing for. Like, what's going on? We losing. The boy like, man, we ain't worried about that, man. We finna go out here and whoop these boys, man. Y'all you tripping, don't worry about it. We knew we was gonna win this game. So I'm like, yo, I'm like, it instantly clicked in my head. I'm like, oh, I'm like. Well, let's ride here. We finna whoop him then. All I remember is Ray Ray stepped back. He pumped fake. Next thing you know, he lost the ball down the field. And Andre went up and got it. Andre come up with the ball. The crowd just go crazy like, yo, we about to be state champs. We about to be state champs. It's like, what? Next thing you know, it come down to one last play. Tyrone Boone and Tyrone sacked the quarterback. It's like, yo, we state champ. We state champ for the first time in Seminole history. We're state champ. And it all started with Ray Ray all strong. I was so excited that we just won. I ran out on the interview. Like, they were asking me questions. And then it's like, bro, I just hear the band turn up. I hear the crowd getting louder. So you see me just looking around. I'm like, man, hey, man I'm gone. I'm out here. <laughs> like, I just ran and <laughs> took off. We go celebrate with the team, man. I'm like, man, I don't ask me too many questions right now. We just one state. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I hope you gotta like, you know, work for what you want. Like, it was still like work that's still like like to get to where you wanna be at to get to this point in life. I mean man, I ain't satisfied with where I'm at. I'm still working to get to where I wanna be. But as far as working for it, I mean, I mean you gotta be relentless to it. That's something you really want. But see, you gotta be tenacious. You know what I'm saying? You can't, what would I say? A no die attitude. Like, I ain't going down without accomplishing what I want to accomplish. But how you build a mentality like that? Man, how I build a mentality like that? That's where I'm from. I'm from Sanford, Florida, bro. We breed that. That's where, that's where we come from. We come from the bottom, man. And then being from Sanford, Florida, knowing that city small, bro. In the world way bigger than that. You gotta want more for yourself. That is, I feel like that's that's sample built built my mind. Wanting more for myself and my family. He is one of the guys. He is one of the guys that, from a standpoint of football, plays this game for a purpose and a reason. Way beyond money. And from a standpoint of when he steps off that field, he is the pillar for his family and he is the living sacrifice for his family, no matter what. So people may have mixed reviews on him, but please know those two things about him before you make any assumptions about him. On that field, he's a guy that plays it the right way, for the right reason, for the love of the game. 
and off that field, everything he does on that field is for his family. So his purpose is greater. That pain cut me deep, and I know it's a reason. Your family ain't your family if you ain't loyal to them people. I done met the devil in the back of a regal, and I'm clutching on his Glock, so I ain't worried about you neither. I know that it ain't gonna be so sunny one day, and I know that this pain ain't really going away, and I know we might not even make it through the day. But my brother ran here, they ain't gonna let that Spent a lot of my years here. Growing up. Uh oh. Hey man, I'm sorry. Born and raised in this crib. Born and raised in this crib. Hey man, for some reason my VCR wouldn't go back that far, man. But that was a heck of a hit. I got it anyway. I had it. Yeah, I got it. I just I thought you had it at the, at the um, exact time, but I, had I did. It. I did, but what I'm saying was I went back to get it. For some reason, I couldn't go back that far. For some reason. Yeah. We grew up to be very family oriented. Ray is Ray believes that family comes first before anybody. So he definitely honors, he definitely loves and preserves his family. Oh, hold his hold his mouth, I I <laughs> this alligator, man. <laughs> I told you, I told your dad, I said, man, you doing great, nigga. You just laying down. Yeah, he pick his ass up. Put his hand pretty much. Oh, I love you. Mm. <laughs> I gotta go watch this. That's on Netflix, shit. It's on Netflix. I ain't download that thing yet. That one you said when we was watching over AJ. Yeah, you say that you can watch all the new movies. When Ray Ray was growing up, he was like, oh my gosh, the biggest kid ever. He was always a part of um, running around and I always knew that he, he was going to have some type of potential because he really had a drive for playing football and basketball and all kinds of sports. But it was just something about football that always, he just, he enjoyed, you know. And uh, he was bad as hell growing up. That, I can't say, you got to hold him, you got to stop fucking shit. That's water right there? Mm -hmm. Good. That's what you need. All that juice. Sleepy, I was up you didn't go to sleep last night. Mm -hmm. You thought she was a little owl? It was that dog. No, what the dog? What the dog was playing? Because I was scared of him. You were scared of him? Yeah, and he was. I was gonna. I thought she was. Well, why you said you weren't scared when I came to pick you up? Mm -hmm. As a father, he loves Amaya, like loves, loves, loves that little girl. And I believe that he goes hard and harder because Amaya is in his life. <laughs> oh. Just being somebody that the neighborhood respected, that my mama could be proud of was the apple of my eye. That's all I ever wanted. Just, just being something, man. So at that point, what else could you ask for? Maybach music. Tears running down the nigga face. In a room full of failures, I feel out of place. Still sleeping on the floor when you deserve better. Got you reeking through the cold even in warm weather. I told Meek I wouldn't trust Nikki. Instead of beefing with your dog, you just give him some distance. We all make mistakes, let's not be too pacific. But like I'd rather be a killer than be a statistic. I never fold, no, I never ran. On my soul, I roll like an avalanche. I thank the Lord I got some great friends. That's why every bottle I open, I say amen. I love my daughter to death. You know what I'm saying? I, I do whatever for her. And, and it's crazy because it's like they say, I mean, that's that's probably the first time I really can honestly say I really feel what love is. You feel me? Like, I really love my daughter. You feel me? And it's like, it's a different feeling. 
bro. I mean, I don't know, understand how people couldn't do everything they can for their child. You feel me? Like, that's what I'm trying to do for mine, you know? It being the simple fact that my dad wasn't there 14, 15 years out of the years of my life, you know what I'm saying? That's something that I take pride in trying to be. Not saying he was a bad one, but I try to be a better dad than what he was to me. You know, Ray Ray definitely a good person, a good hearted person, man. Competitive, everything we do, competitive. Uh, you know, uh, you know, take care of what take care of business, you know, take care of anything you gotta handle, you know, basically, you know, just a strong minded, strong hearted man. That's my brother. That's what type of person. We are in the Seminole High School. How about the state championship this year for Seminole? Let's hear it for Seminole State Championship. Get it up. Time now for a verbal commit from Ray Ray Armstrong. We are with his family. He has narrowed it down to five different schools. We put some hats on family members. We got all the right hats. Yeah, that's it. Versatility. You're the number two ranked player in the ESPN 150 in terms of an athlete. How many positions did you play this year during the game? I play every position, every, every position set the line. You certainly do. All right, we got our hats here. You want to make a pick? For sure. All right. LSU, Miami, Georgia, Florida. LSU, Georgia, Miami, Florida. Hey, ha, hold on, hold on. How about this one? How about this one? Florida, Florida. Oh, a lot of Florida fans, a lot of Florida. How about this, Les Miles and, and LSU? Oh, LSU. That, how about Georgia, the Bulldogs? No Bulldogs. How about the Miami Hurricanes? Who likes the Miami Hurricanes? Ball's in your court, let's go. All right, I'm a, I'm a mama's boy, so I'm staying in Florida, so you can count them two out. Down to Florida and Miami. I'm gonna go with it. Nah, this is who I'm at. Miami Hurricanes. Why Miami? Cause man, I, everyone took the visit. I just fell in love with it. It feel like I'm still at home when I'm out there. I prayed for one to go to the University of Miami when he was a baby, <laughs> and I wanted him to be a, a teammate of his brother at the University of Miami. Oh. Now I'm here, man. This is what this guy, Eric Armstrong. Everybody in the hall right here. When you came out of the game, you came out. Oh, that's your what? Your blood. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. Awesome. Man, Ray Ray came in my junior year. I think I was in college. Came in from uh, Seminole High School, top recruit in the nation, and we might change our secondary. Though. Ray Ray Armstrong, Tom, a lot of players are saying that this guy reminds him a lot of Sean Taylor. I remember uh, it was Ray freshman year in college. Um, it was third game of the season. It was for Oklahoma. It was like, the thing was like three and one at the time. It was, it was a big, big year. And uh, they was running another play. They had gave it to DeMarco Murray, who was probably one of the best backs in the country during that time. And uh, he got the ball, he was running, he stopped. He came, tried to jump over somebody. And all I see Ray coming to smash him and knock him down and stand over him. I was like, man, this kid, he, he's ready for big time football. Landry Jones back, second possession. Here's DeMarco Murray cutting, jumping, vaulting, smacked at the 14 yard line. <laughs> this is the freshman, Brent, that they're talking about. Ray Ray Armstrong, a true freshman. And they actually put him in the same sentence with the late great Sean Taylor. <laughs> Five back, one touchdown, 106 tackles. Maybe I'm speaking crazy, or maybe I just know Ray Ray Armstrong. <laughs>
hear him. You're going to feel him. Like I say, when Riri walks in the room, you feel his presence. You feel his aura. Riri is a guy that, you know, always outgoing. You know, he got us moving. He want to be chill and laid back, but he going to make sure everybody in the room know he's there. I mean, he, was, he was a dog, man. Everybody know. You know what I mean? Very aggressive. He acts how he look, if that makes sense. He's a 6'4 guy, 220 pounds, and he acts that way. He's a... A dominant alpha male, you get that presence from. On the field, Ray Ray is a guy that you know that everybody on the team want to be around. Like we feel up the energy. You know, see yourself on defense. You ain't got to worry about him being quiet. You ain't got to worry about him not calling play. He was a leader. You know, like I told him when he came in, we need him. Like, we need the guy that brought a different type of energy to the secondary, a dog mentality, and he bought it. And that's he was he was pretty much like pretty much the savior of our games my junior senior year. Kid out of school at the time, we were going through the University of Ramp, we were going through a whole sanction. Like, we had the old, whole Nevin Shapiro incident. It was just like, like, we couldn't even, like, we couldn't even play a bowl game for a few years at the time. So, the school was already going through, like, penalties, sanctions. We can't go to bowl games. We're going through all type of stuff. NCAA was on us heavy. The school was under sanctions for, or they was in the process of going on dealing with sanctions for illegal this or illegal that, whatever the case was. He had no connections to any agents or anybody connected to an agent or anything like that. I had a girlfriend at the time. She was a couple years older than me. So this is my senior year. She probably just graduated like a year or two. So she went to a whole another school, but she had her own business and she was doing her own thing at the time. She was a public relations person who represented professional athletes in different leagues. We went out to eat, bro, probably one twelve. I Post a picture, put it on Twitter or something. That's when Twitter probably was. I first got on Twitter. So I put a picture on Twitter, like whatever the fool was, you know what I'm saying? And my, my coaches or whatever, they they call my phone, blow my phone up after this. And it's like, yo, where you at? You 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 at some, some, you at um, Prime 112 with such and such girl? Like, she's an agent. She was not an NFL agent, and nor was she trying to impact his life in such a way to like get a one up or get a one over and help him make it to the league. Well, that whole little situation got back to the school and now we got to do interviews and all this extra stuff about the stuff. But so, I mean, pretty much what got me kicked out of school, it wasn't cause I was with her. Ray apparently did not tell the truth to the NCAA at one point. And it was asking me about the situation. And to me being young, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I ain't really know what was going on. So I'm like, I'm trying to just steer them somewhere else. Like I'm so pretty much, I don't tell them the whole truth. I think Ray wasn't as truthful as he could have been when he was going through his situation in college because he was scared. He didn't want to risk his chances of being drafted. He come back to me. I had to do another, I had to do the interview over. And he came back to me like, like I was like, man, you know what? Before I went in, I was like, man, forget it, but I'm just tell him, I'm just tell him what happened. Like, I'm just tell him the whole truth. It was found that he did not tell the truth, so they um, suspended him from the University of Miami. I guess, because I probably because I didn't tell him the whole truth the first time. I guess that's what they they probably got. They probably uh, thought I was lying about something or whatever, but they got mad and they kicked me out because of that. For my son to miss out on something that meant a whole lot to him, it bothers me. I sat there three days in a row, man, and we missed out on the draft. Um, and we had an opportunity to go down when, when he, he lost a few games, he got suspended. He was held out before he was suspended a game um, by the team. And I felt like it was my goal. It was, I, as a father, I needed to get to Miami to let them know who I was and who he was. A lot of praying, a lot of covering him in prayer and say, hey, we're here with you with the good and the bad. Mama, I'm not going nowhere. So through all that, that whole process, man, it, 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 it gave us, it helped to build a strength as a family. So um, we kind of, we fought for him and we still fight for him today because he's still fighting. Each and every day, and he, every every team he's played for, every year he's been in the NFL, man, it had to do with his hard work. Um, and without the hard work, he wouldn't have made. It. Okay. 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 I don't put no 
It's crazy, huh? I'm going to work like this. That's going that bit like this. Let them know I'm about business. You know what I'm saying? Let them know I'm about business. I ain't coming to play. <laughs> People never ever see me on it. No, please. Day one, man. Start of the week. Monday. Gotta go get it. Hey, what's our policy? Do you have a policy about the bags or anything? It has to be clear, no? So, where you are? Huh? Where you are? Take care. Awesome. Yeah. I really wanted it. So, I mean, that's just something I was always talking about growing up, me in first grade, telling my teachers that, elementary teachers, they asking what you gonna be when you grow up type stuff like that. So, I'm like, I'm gonna be an NFL player. I came into the NFL with a chip on my shoulder, ready to prove a lot of people wrong. You feel me? Just, just to show them that I'm still the same player that they was looking at a few years ago. I just had a little small little hurdle in the road. Hey man, we out here live in the fit. Game five, we five, big game. We out here playing the crib too, top of it, baby. Gotta show up, show up. The light's bright. That's how I like it. We here, they just about to get it. Get it tight. And it's like, I really love football. Like, I don't want to really do nothing else. It ain't nothing else I really want to do in my life. I was telling, so I'm just telling myself, like, this is what I'm going to do when I get older. You feel me? There ain't nothing going to stop me from getting it. And I don't care about nobody saying that it ain't many people to make it. It ain't, you might not, it ain't like the, the percentages are very low or whatever. I wasn't hearing none of that, you know what I'm saying? So I had confidence and faith in myself and my God-given ability. So, I mean, I took matters in my own hand. It was just, that was my plan A, plan B, plan C, whatever you want to call it. It's licking this weed, just a balance. Remember people telling me I couldn't have this. They told me that I would never ever be shit. Now my watch and my chain make them see sick. Yeah, it took a little minute, but it's worth the wait. Every day starting to feel like a birthday. Niggas tried this shit on me in the worst way. But I kept that shit on me since the first day. Tallahassee? No, I ain't doing that. Gainesville? Hell no, I ain't doing 
Right. I came to Miami. My first time in Miami. I'm out for Uncle Luke, you feel me? We out for Uncle Luke, you feel me? <laughs> That's the first, I swear to God, bro, the first visit I came down, I said, man, oh yeah, I'm so quick. I'm coming here. This, this is why I can enjoy my time and enjoy life and see different shit, bro. You feel me? Ever since I've been down the city, I swear to God, I just go by everything I'm doing. So put it in position. I'm in college. I'm in college, right? At the time, we got I got teammates on the team. The boys living in all like condos, big condos downtown. Like while we in college, right, right. Feel me? We come from Sam. Yeah. I ain't never been in no condo. Like, I don't even know what a condo is. Like, you know what I'm saying? It might be crazy, but listen, they ain't never been in none of that. Like, we up at this 30 fleet, 30 little floors up. Like, man, listen here, man. I say, listen, bro. I say, in order for a nigga to live like this, man, I gotta, I gotta make it happen. I, gotta, I, gotta, I say, man, that's how I wanna live my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I seen this shit when I was 18, 19 years old. You feel me? Like, I seen, I seen, man, always oh, over with. Like, that's why I need to never was coming back home like that, bro. I say, I'm good. Like, I was straight. Bro. Ain't nothing like this in Sanford, bro. Like, ain't no way, I was going, ain't no way around it. You feel me? So, at all. I came down here, bro, and it was over with. I told him, I see too way. much, bro. And it's like, bro, life is way bigger than Sanford, bro. Like, it's shit you can do out here, bro, and enjoy yourself. Man. Just simple shit like getting on a boat, bro, enjoying your time with your family. It's just yeah. simple stuff like that, bro. That people don't, people are never do, are never done coming from Sam. You hear me? And it's crazy. How you trying to like, you know, continue your legacy and like, how you trying to build it out? I mean, as far as football goes, and sports goes, I'm on the back end of that, so I'm just trying to push out a few more years. God willing, but if not, I'm ready to go and move on to my next endeavors in life, man. You know, I got a clothing store, kit, keep it tight. I had to get my mind right. I had to switch up my life. So tell me why it feel like to really live a good life. Yo, what's up, man? How y'all doing, man? What's going on? You know what I'm saying? I had a vibe with my people. Thank y'all for coming. <laughs> I'm finna go make me some spaghetti. What you gotta say oh, about your cousin? Oh, you my cousin? That's my favorite cousin right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's my cousin slash my big brother. Like, him and AJ, they raised me free for real, for real. For real, for real. They used to beat me up all the time. That's why I know how to fight, because of them mm -hmm. right there. <laughs> Yeah. Raven used to be so mean, but he when he got older, he got nicer. Not AJ the mean one, Raven the nice one. Yeah. Um. Yeah, inspiration. Like I remember us twenty deep at my grandma house on weekends, outside playing football or inside on the Xbox. They'll never let me play, but because I was always younger than them, but he always been an inspiration to me. It's just, it's I told y'all. I told y'all that's what the boy do. He used to Debo people. Nah, it was AJ. Oh, man, them niggas. Uh, that no, that was AJ. AJ. No, was AJ. AJ. My bad, Ray. Them I niggas was the older niggas. I was the baby. I, I just sprayed the car together right there. So don't forget. listen to that. Yeah. AJ and Greg. That's the point. I remember, I remember one time, boy, your brother, it was Lenard. I think he got in a fight with. Probably with him and DD fight. Yeah. He was, he was either him and him DD fighting or something like that. No, 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 no. It was me and your brother. It was me and Lenard. We was in that bitch. I think we had to do something, boy. We went in that bitch, bro. Grandma called herself trying to whoop a nigga, man. <laughs> trying to give a nigga a whooping. Man, nigga, we in that bitch. She, she go to whooping on Lenard. Yeah. He in that bitch crying like a bitch. She called, she called hitting me. She I'm looking at her. I'm like, like in my head, I'm like, Grandma, for real, bro. Like, really, like, she trying her hardest too in that bitch going crazy. We looking at her like, man, grandma, come on now. You don't even do this. Like, <laughs> you trying to give a nigga whooping, like, you don't even don't do, do this. Like that, <laughs> don't do Brandon like that. Don't do Brandon like that. I'm like, you don't do oh, this. Oh, Well, my yeah. mama give out them real whooping, boy. Oh, like, oh. I'm used to getting in there, getting passed up. Mama in that bitch, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> yeah, two pieces. <laughs> grandma come, I'm like, no, nah, grandma. You know, in that bitch climbing and all that. Nigga, you soft, nigga. You, you cry, it don't even hurt. <laughs> Always remember this one, man, at all times. To be successful, you gotta go harder than hard, beyond, beyond. You dig what I'm saying? I tell them all the time about this one, man. Success is when you used to being successful. When y'all become each other, you have become successful. Always remember that. Stay up.
for real. All right. Um. So I've been we've been we don't been recording putting together this document for the past few years. It's Just almost done. It's almost done. And um. So I'm gonna do a permit for it. So we need to uh, really jot down our little ins and outs of what we need to do to set that up. Hey, what does keep it tight mean? Keep it tight. Self-explanatory. Keep it tight. You can make it be mean whatever you want it to mean. But for me, as far as it's just, it's just keeping everything tight, man. Keep as far as your priorities, your, your lifestyle, your your relationship, your, your your body, fitness, whatever you want to call it, man. Just keeping everything tight. Don't let nothing on the outside dictate a negative mindset for you. Just keep everything tight. Keep God first and then keep pushing. Focus on my future, I'm a fell out. It feels weird when your friend don't you well out. When your shit hit the fan, get the smell out. People only care about it if it is now. Thank God I got some real friends. Cause when I made it, congratulations for better than let's spin again. And now you try to skip the hard part. But being versatile will have you taking care of shit like Walmart. And I'm way out the ballpark. They still looking for their seats while I try to put the kind part. I mean, I'm rolling on you fuck niggas. And for the hundred fucking time, no, you niggas cannot fuck with us. I'm trying to learn how to say this shit nicely. Fuck you and anybody who don't like me. I had a dream about a pocket full of Nikes. That same dream gonna be a movie where it's Spike Lee. Motivation to them kids on the mongoose. Point four bitches I do in a one two. And I ain't never asked a DJ to play shit. It was my papa lit the man, he had to break this. A cold shoulder could easily turn to a facelift. And I ain't asked for hair, she wanna taste this. And I can fuck cause I'm on her friend playlist. Yeah, that's some real forever play. I got a bag on me, look at me now. I got racks on me, look at me now. Oh. I got a brick on me, look at me now.